There are many misconceptions about what socialism really means today. Let's start with the definition. Socialism is any economic system where the means of production are publicly owned and the public controls the distribution of wealth. That is, every factory, every farm, every manufactory, every store, everything is owned by the public as a whole rather than by private entities. And the public controls the distribution of wealth. This might be done democratically, I suppose. Well, there are many, of course, different approaches to socialism, some of which will allow you to own some private property, such as your own house, and others that would argue that even that must be publicly owned. But anytime the word socialism is used, you need to ask, um, is what being referred to as socialism, is this actually public ownership of the means of production? To address some of the common misconceptions about socialism, I think the best, most effective way to do this right now is to think about some of the policies implemented by President Obama. Many people refer to Obama as a socialist, or I should say denounce him as a socialist. Anyone who holds up socialism as a worthy end, well, I have yet to hear any of them refer to Obama as a socialist. Those who call Obama a socialist are usually doing so with a derogatory tone. Well, the major bill that was signed into law by Obama that's often considered socialism, that is, the health care bill, well, let's ask ourselves this. Are the means of health care publicly owned? Well, the bill certainly did not put the hospitals or doctor's offices directly under the government. But what about the insurance? Well, the insurance companies are still privately owned. The health care bill requires that all Americans acquire some sort of health insurance or else pay a tax. But this health assurance insurance is acquired from the private sector, from private entities. You can buy insurance from Humana, or you can buy it from Blue Cross Blue Shield, for example. And any of these will meet the requirements so that you don't have to pay the tax. These companies are still privately owned, and they operate for profit. They compete with each other. So this is really not an example of socialism. It's an example of essentially the government sort of forcing the market economy to run a certain way. So it's government regulation, but it's not socialism. I've often heard that food stamps are socialism. Well, here's the problem. Socialism is based on the premise that everyone works and everyone should reap from the fruits of their labor. So the idea is that everybody is working, contributing to the same system, and then reaping the benefits thereof. Well, programs like food stamps, um, the different welfare programs such as TANF, Temporary Assistance for Needy Families, and insurance programs like unemployment compensation, these actually have the opposite effect that socialists seek. Socialists want everyone to work and everyone to then benefit from that labor. Unemployment compensation is paid to those who are currently not working. Food stamps are usually paid to those who are not working or those who maybe aren't earning enough money to take care of themselves. Now, if we required people to do government work to receive these benefits, you could say that maybe then it would be a limited form of socialism. But paying people to not work is really the opposite of the goal of any socialist. So, real socialism in practice would be any system where everything is basically centrally planned. Uh, the public owns the means of production, and then the public decides as a whole how to distribute those goods.